Hello and welcome to the 008 reading assessment. So this is um, the second last assessment for you guys. Um, obviously we're working on our um, essays at the moment, um, but we're gonna get through this reading assessment and I'm sure everyone's gonna get 100%. So I wanted to introduce this to you before the actual assessment event tomorrow, um, because you'll have the, this class and the following class um, to review uh, your 008 books um, and also just practice that vocabulary that we've been working on for the last um, few weeks. So the exam, um, the reading skills test is related to units one through six. You're required to read a range of texts and answer the following type of questions. So we're going to look at short answer questions. So that's um, giving a short, quick sentence usually. Gap fill, which you've done a lot with me. So gap fill questions. Matching, so matching a word to a sentence, for instance. Um, and comprehension, which shows that you understand some information. So you've used the context to understand the information. So it's all based on topics that we've discussed in class. And it's also included the skills that we've learned in class. So you shouldn't feel anxious or nervous about this. Um, you've been uh, reading and uh, completing all of your work um, and working on these vocab tests as well. Um, also your work on research has forced you to do reading. So I'm sure you're all going to be fine. Um, make sure that you're confident when you walk into this assessment. And that's why I'm giving you a bit of more of an introduction to make sure you know what you're gonna be dealing with as soon as you walk in the door. So the details, um, there are 30 questions and it's worth 30% of your total mark for 008. So each question is worth one mark. Even if um, in that question you need to write multiple things, so um, you need to provide a description or write two words or choose two things, um, if you only have one thing, you do not get a mark for that. There are no half marks, okay? Um, so you need to read very carefully, but I'll talk to you about that in top tips. You're going to have an hour to read the text. Um, however, I'm going to give you two sessions to complete it. So you're going to have two classes together um, to make sure you've got enough time. Most important thing is having your comprehension. It's not about how fast you can read. Um, so I have allocated that in your schedule. At the end of the test, you have five minutes to transfer your answers onto the answer sheet. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, it's very similar to what you did in level one, um, but I'm not sure how prepared you were for that one. So um, we want to make sure that we're going to all get some fantastic marks. So short answer, you're going to read a text and answer questions related to this. So you need to scan and skim the text to find the answer. So what you really need to do is um, before you walk in, make sure you've got a red pen and you've got your black pen um, and maybe your white out. If you want to use a pencil and eraser, that's fine. But it's really important you have something that can highlight. So you want to highlight those main words in the question. So if it says what are the characteristics of a donkey, the underlying word would be characteristics and donkey. So I want to scan through and skim through my document to see if I can find the word donkey and then find the word characteristics and I know that my information will be there. Now be careful of spelling and it could be one, two or more words. So who is the author of the book? Might be two or three words or even four. It could be Dr. Rambunctious uh, Phenomenon uh, Catastrophe Smith. What date was it first published? What's the name of the main character? So these are all examples of short answer questions. So it could be one, two or more words. The gap fill is when you actually, you're gonna read a text and then the text will be paraphrased. So the similar information is written differently. I know that you know what paraphrase means now and some words are missing. Again, we've been doing this a lot um, during our uh, vocabulary. So I've been trying to train you in all of these skills as we've gone through those quizzes. So then you need to write the correct word in the space. My tip, read the text first, then read the paraphrase, and then scan the original text to see where the blank, where what word would fit into the blank space. So main text, then the paraphrase, and then scan the original. Don't reread the whole original. It's going to take up just too much of your time. Matching is a nice easy one. They might give you a description or they might ask you a particular question and you need to match maybe a paragraph or a sentence or a word. 
So matching a word with a definition, a definition with a word, matching a sentence with a paragraph, match a word or definition to the paragraph or question. So it could be any of those matching, okay? And again, you've been doing this quite a lot over the last few weeks. Comprehension is um, probably the most challenging one, though I know it's not difficult for you guys because you're all so intelligent. Um, so what comprehension does, comprehension means to understand. Do you comprehend? Do you understand? So this proves that you understand what you've read. It shows that you can use context to understand words that you might not have known before. Now, I've given you a lot of vocabulary, but not all of it, because I need to see that you can use context to understand certain vocabulary, okay? And that's part of the actual test. So if you see a word you don't understand, don't freak out. It's the purpose of the test. It just means you need to go and find that word, look at the words and sentences around it, and then identify what it means. So you can be showing, proving that you can identify main ideas and that you can identify supporting details, which is great that we've been doing our SC plan because you definitely understand the difference between a main idea and supporting details. Um, so then it might give you a multiple choice, so indicate which might be correct, or it might give you a short answer. Both of these fall within comprehension, even though they look a bit different, and it's all about you being able to use your brain and the text that you've been provided to understand what the text is saying. Here are just some top tips for you. So really you should already know all of the vocabulary I've given you. Like I said, you're not gonna know all of the vocab in the test. That is the point, it's to prove that you can use context to understand text. Any vocab you don't understand, use the context to interpret its meaning. This one's really important. Read the question slowly and read it twice, okay? If you flick over it, read it quickly, you might say that, um, tell me three different animals that do not eat grass, but you have read it very quickly. And so you've written three animals that do eat grass and you've missed out on that entire mark. So read the question slowly and twice. As I said, I've given you two classes, two periods to complete this, so you should have more than enough time. See if it asks for multiple answers. For instance, it might say name two characteristics, or there may be multiple answers. If you only write down one characteristic, then I'm not going to be able to give you um, a, a mark for that. If you only give me one uh, answer in, uh, sorry, in multiple choice, but in fact there are three, again, I can't give you a mark for that. Again, be careful with reading. If it asks for the common name or the scientific name, what is the question actually asking for? And be very specific when you're reading it. If you give me, even though it might have the same meaning, if you give me the wrong answer based on the question, I can't give you a mark. So read slowly and twice. See if it asks for dates versus details. So what is the, uh, the question actually requiring for you to get a correct, successful mark? Um, as I said before, make sure you've got a red pen, a purple pen, a blue pen, whatever colour pen you wish. And you need to underline the main words in the question, then skim the reading to find where the answer is. This is going to speed up the process. And it's going to give you more time to review at the end. Don't read all the words in the article. Use your scanning and your skimming skills to match word with content. And then you can read that paragraph or that section to find out what the answer is. So for an example here, you need to find the words diurnal and marsupial. So you see numbers are the only diurnal, I can't say that word, marsupials. What phrase in the text is used to explain diurnal? So it says what phrase in the text is asked. But first we've highlighted this, so we're gonna go through our text and find these two words. Then we'll go back to the question and see what it's asking us. It says what phrase. And so here you would write the exact phrase. You're gonna make a quotation here. That's what it's asking for, okay? So questions asking to describe or explain something, you may use your note-taking skills. So for instance, you don't need to use full sentences so long as I know your meaning. So diurnal means blah, 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 okay? So you don't need to put a full, the meaning of diurnal is da, 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 da. 
um, again, just in using your note taking skills. A tip about multiple choice questions. Now, they're often really similar words in the sentence structure to confuse you. So if you look quickly, all the sentences might actually look the same. They might have the same words in the same order, but there'll be one small difference. So the great thing you can do, well, first of all, breathe, don't, don't stress. They're doing this on purpose. If you know the psychology behind the people that are making these tests, um, it's going to help you because you're like, oh, I see, they're trying to trick me. You know what the trick is, so you know how you can overcome it. So read each sentence slowly, and then we go through um, a process of elimination. So you cross out the ones you think are wrong, and usually there are two that are really obviously incorrect. They might not relate to the question, or they might be just ridiculous. And then usually you have two left, and then you can choose from those two which one is correct. So you can take a bit more time doing some reading, okay? So this process of elimination is a really great way. Sometimes it's easier to identify what's wrong uh, rather than trying to identify what's right. Um, so spelling is important, so make sure that you check your spelling. Make sure Fiona can read your writing. I need to be able to read your writing. So um, no cursive words if we can print slowly and nicely. Um, Choco gave me some really nice writing, handwriting the other day. Um, double check that you've put the right answer in the right space. I've had so many students back in Tangshan that have accidentally put question six, for instance, in seven. I can see it's the right answer but I can't give them a mark for it, okay? So just attention to detail. Make sure that the correct answer is in the correct area. So you need to give yourself at least 10 minutes at the end to make sure you're putting everything in the correct space um, and also double checking those answers. So if you have time, check your answers. Um, don't leave early. Um, it's that last sort of 10, 15 minutes where you'd like to just go, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. But that 10, 15 minutes of just doing some double checking could get you an extra two or four marks. It could mean the difference between passing or failing or the difference between a B and an A. Remember, you can do it. I know that sometimes uh, some of you are a bit negative Nellies um, and say, I can't, I can't, I can't. Negative thoughts usually lead to negative outcomes. So if you walk in there going, oh no, it's too hard, I'm not gonna be able to do it, it actually blocks your mind. So you're putting up a great big cement wall right in front of your mind and you can't think. So your eyes and your mind can't talk to each other. So positive thoughts equal positive outcome. And I know that you are all, every single one of you in 11A are capable of passing this the first time. And we won't need to see any 55%, okay? So please just breathe feel confident, you've been working going through all these quizzes, and not only those quizzes, they've taught you the vocab, but they've also been training you in how to answer these types of questions. So you've got all of the skills and you're gonna walk in there nice and happy and confidently. The last point I wanted to say, I believe in you. Okay, so just breathe. If you get frustrated, stop looking, stop trying, just sit up, look at the wall, take a deep breath out and a deep breath in, everything's okay, and then go back to it, okay? So try not to stress, um, just breathe. Know that your teacher is um, over in Australia thinking of you and knowing that um, you guys have got the tools to be successful. So I'm gonna give you the rest of um, this class and the following class um, to review, page, so chapters one through six, um, review the vocabulary um, and just prepare yourself. So tomorrow you're actually going to have the reading test. Um, and uh, as I said, it, if you have planned, which is what we did today, so we've been planning, we're preparing ourselves. Um, once you're prepared, you're obviously going to be successful. So I'll leave it there. If you have any questions, as usual, please feel free to uh, send me a message um, and I will speak to you in the next class.